We are joined now by David Rode. David is a journalist, investigative journalist with uh, Reuters. He is a two-time Pulitzer Prize winner and also a two-time prisoner because of your work. Um, it's easy to perhaps, uh, but, but true, yeah, yes. laugh yes. about now a little yeah. bit, but uh, you were held by the Bosnian Serbs in 1995. And five years ago, you were held for seven months and ten yes. days by the Taliban. And Correct. most recently, you have written an article saying that the United States and other countries, they need to have a uniform policy in place how to deal with people like yourselves who were held by extremist groups that demand ransoms. What, what do you think the U.S. policy should be? In your instance, money was sought but never paid. You escaped. But they wanted millions of dollars. Yeah, and I was very lucky. Um, you know, people that are trapped in these situations, it's, it's incredibly difficult for them. What prompted me to write the column was really the, the killing, the, the murder of James Foley. Um, what's so unusual about that case, and it illustrates a larger problem, is that he was held with European captives. There were French journalists um, held by the Islamic State, Spanish journalists, uh, Danish journalists. All of those European governments paid ransoms. Those European journalists went home. The U.S. refused to pay, and Jim Foley died. I don't think the U.S. government should be paying ransom, but it's got to pressure its allies for a more unified approach because this current system just isn't working. It's not stopping kidnappings because, you know, uh, kidnappers correctly think they can get large ransoms, and um, it's not really protecting Americans either. So the bottom line here, what do you think the blanket policy should be for all civilized countries when a ransom is sought? The not to pay it? Yeah, I would say not to pay government uh, uh, ransoms. When a government pays, it's, they're much higher ransoms. They have resources that people don't have, um, and it sort of skews the market. The, the market price that was set for the Foley family was impossible for them to meet because European governments have paid so much money. The, the, the sort of unofficial situation in the U.S. is that if a family can come up with a ransom or an organization, a journalistic organization, uh, oil workers or contractors get kidnapped, sometimes their companies will pay. The U.S. government will pay, well, sorry, will turn a blind eye to the payment of a ransom by a family or by a company. Um, technically, that money is material support to a terrorist organization, but they allow it to be resolved that way. I, I think that's a good kind of middle ground. Um, but again, the problem is, you know, no family and, and most companies cannot approach the millions of dollars that European governments are paying. Now, you escaped. You escaped with a colleague. And then there was a driver, and he escaped uh, or, or, was, or was let go a, a short yes, time all thereafter. Three of us came home. Yeah. What do you think would have happened had you not successfully escaped? What would your fate have been? I was grabbed by the Taliban and they, in Afghanistan, and they quickly took me into the tribal areas of Pakistan. I could have been there for years. Uh, there was a lot of controversy about this swap of Bo Bergdahl, the American soldier. Um, he was held by the exact same Taliban militant group. It's called the Haqqani Network that had me. I escaped a few weeks before Bergdahl was captured. I may have spent, you know, five years uh, in captivity as he did. One of the problems here are these safe havens where in Syria they can kidnap you and have a safe haven and there's no pressure on them to reduce their demands because they can say they're safe as long as they want. In Pakistan where I was held and Bergdahl was held, there's no pressure. The Pakistani military is not doing anything. Somalia, so North Africa, this is the problem and if you get taken into a militant safe haven you know, where it's just lawless and there's no military pressure on them, they can hold you for years. Now, you spent, as I said, some seven months, a little more than that, a prisoner held by the Taliban. At that time, ISIS didn't exist. Now we've heard so much about this even more radical organization. Why do you believe it's attracting so many followers, foreign fighters, people from the U.S., Canada, Europe? What, what is the attraction? You, you spent seven months with, with extremists. What do, you, what do you think the answer is? Um, it's, they live in a sort of alternate universe. Um, they think that there's a sort of global um, conspiracy by Christians and Jews and Hindus together to obliterate Islam from the face of the earth. And, and I, you know, it's, they're very good with social media. And in terms of kidnapping, it's getting worse. Um, the initial demands for my release by the Taliban were for $25 million in cash and 15 prisoners from Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. When we escaped, it was seven million in cash and seven prisoners. The initial demand for Jim Foley five years later from the Islamic State was $130 million. Um, there's an estimate, there was a report by the New York Times that Al-Qaeda affiliates, um, mostly from European governments, have been paid $125 million in ransoms 
in the last five years. Uh, for some groups, the al-Qaeda affiliate in Yemen, it's a primary source of income, these ransoms. So you've got more radical groups, more kidnappings, and higher ransom, and that just goes back to this basic point of we need a sort of broad and, and cohesive international strategy. Well, David, we're glad you're uh, back with us in the United States. I know this was five years ago, but uh, it is uh, still something that all journalists are keenly aware of, specifically your, your ordeal and, of course, the ordeal of other journalists who are still being held. We thank you for your time. David Rode he is an investigative reporter with Reuters. This is David Lee Miller reporting for foxnews.com.